So I'm excited to talk about this month's fossil, which is a small little specimen, little fossil specimen of a tiny Eocene horse that uh, I found the lower jaw of a couple years ago. The oldest fossil horses are found in the lowermost strata of the Eocene rocks, dated around 55 to 50 million years ago here in North America, and appear to have evolved from a group of primitive ungulate mammals referred to as condylars, um, and in particular a diverse group of condylars called the phenacodontids. Now the earliest horse is considerably smaller than today's modern horse, but it exhibits a number of characteristics that are shared. Uh, most importantly is the mesaxial distribution of the toes, in which the weight is borne by the axis of the central toe. Now the teeth of these fossils show that the early horses were browsers, and they likely ate very little tough grass, preferring instead a diet of softer leaves, fruits, and even maybe some nuts. Grape seeds have been found in the stomach of some of these earliest horses. Now, one of the greatest debates uh, is in paleontology is what we should call these early horses. In 1876, O.C. Marsh uh, named several fossils of these early horses from Wyoming and New Mexico Eohippus meaning Don Horse. However, his rival, Edward Drinker Cope, came up with his own unique name, Ectoconium, after collecting Eocene fossils in the same layers of rocks in New Mexico. Cope also used the name Heracotherium for one of his species, claiming that this particular species of North American fossil horse was the same as some fossils that had been named by Richard Owen in England of a fossil he had named Heracotherium way back when in 1841. Thus, from the start, there was a lot of confusion surrounding the naming of these early Eocene fossil horses. Eohippus, Echocodium, and Heracotherium were cited, often depending on whether you believed Marsh or Cope were correct. In 1896, both Marsh and Cope had died, leaving the decision to rest on a new generation of paleontologists who were able to re-examine the fossils. Jacob Wortman, hoping to get a job at Yale University, began an ambitious study of O.C. Marsh's collection of fossil mammals there, and he concluded that the valid taxa for these fossils was Heracotherium and that Cope was partly right in using Richard Owen's name. Wortman synonymized Cope's name Equicodium and Marsh's name Eohippus with the much older proposed name Heracotherium. Now Jacob Wortman noticed, however, a few differences between North American Heracotherium and European Heracotherium. First was the number of toes. In several North American specimens where the full, complete skeleton was preserved, there was either five or four toes in the hind leg, while in the European Heracotherium often just contained five, with the fifth toe just a small, tiny vestigial toe. However, Jacob Wortman also noticed that there was differences in the teeth. In particular, the second upper premolar, which in North American fossils contained two cusps, while in the European fossils contained only one cusp. Most paleontologists agree with Wortman's study. In fact, the same year that his study came out, another study suggested that Heracotherium should be used exclusively. And the idea was also advanced by the British paleontologist Forrester Cooper and American paleontologist Gigi Simpson. So Eohippus was dead much like Brontosaurus was purged from the list of dinosaurs, with the older, originally named Apatosaurus, replacing it. So it was with Eohippus. No longer was it used, for the older Heracotherium had supplanted it. And paleontologists used Heracotherium to describe these North American fossils, but beginning in the 1980s, paleontologists in both England and North America, they began to question this relationship. 
The public also still clung to the, to the term Eohippus. In fact, in 1996, the United States Post Office issued a postage stamp using the name Eohippus rather than Heracotherium. In 2002, David Froelich published an ambitious study of early Eocene fossil horses. He concluded that the European Heracotherium was a close relative of the Paleotheridae family, an early sort of offshoot uh, of early equid relatives or horse relatives. And he divided the North American early horses into seven genera, Shivahippus, Mimiippus, Eryhippus, Zinicahippus, Eohippus, Pliohippus, and Protoorehippus. These are all known from the Wasatchian, or earliest Eocene layer of rocks in the American West. Later horses included Orohippus and Epihippus, and these are found in younger rocks uh, dated starting about 50 to 46 million years ago. Now, not everyone agrees with this arrangement. However, there is support for the name Shivahippus for the earliest member of the group, which is often referred to as the zero horse, because it is found only in a narrow layer of rocks or biozone at the very onset of the Eocene, referred to as the Wasatch Zero Horizon. Now, Mimihippus, Eryhippus, Zinicahippus, and Eohippus are known from the middle part, or a little bit higher up in the rock uh, layers. Well, Pliohippus and Protoorohippus are known from the upper parts of the rock layers of the Wasatchian biozone. In my own opinion, there's actually not much separating Mimiippus, Eryhippus, and Eohippus, and I tend to lump those three genera together into a single genus, Eohippus, and distinguish them based on their species names. However, the genus Eohippus is now valid once again. But I really don't know if this particular specimen that I found is, in fact, Eohippus, because the other genus, Zinicahippus, is characterized by a much larger fourth premolar. So if you have a specimen like this one, which unfortunately lacks that tooth, it's very hard to tell which genus it belongs to. Now, there's no differences uh, that I can find between the molar teeth of Zinicahippus and those of Eohippus, and they lived at the same time. Eohippus is more common than the rare Zinicahippus, so it's more likely that this specimen is actually a member of the genus Eohippus. Oh boy, there was a lot of hippuses in this video, which you might guess means horse. And I've only been discovering, discussing the first five million years of their evolution. If you want to learn more about the evolution of horses after the early Eocene, check out my older video on time traveling with fossil horses.